And now, uh, delighted to say we're joined by both Sean Reedy and Graeme O'Toole because later today on OTB Sports Radio at 2 p.m., the split season is going to air. It's a new GEA documentary series available as well, of course, on our OTB podcast network over the Christmas. It's going to be airing the episodes four in all across the Christmas break. We've got episodes coming as well on Christmas Eve, Monday the 28th, Tuesday 29th, and Wednesday the 30th. Sean and Graeme, good morning to you, lads. Good morning, Will. Will, how are you? Look, I don't know which one of you wants to start off on this, but tell me where the idea for this documentary came because we have had this extremely unusual year that's gone by. And was that a case that you wanted to just document it, lads? Uh, I think what happened was, Will, is around the time that the level five restrictions were due to come into place and there was that whole conversation and I like it kind of struck a bit home for me because my parents own a small business and around the time that there was the conversation of should the county, the inter-county season go ahead, uh, my own dad was forced to close his business. And to be honest with you, even though I come from a GAA background, come from a huge GAA family, it's probably where I spent most of my life growing up was the local GAA club. I was probably one of the people that were a little bit cynical, a little bit angry, thought that it probably shouldn't have gone ahead. And uh, one day I sent a, 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 an extremely long WhatsApp voice note to Graham saying that if it's going ahead, there should be some sort of documentation of it. To be honest with you, Will, I think when the idea of the documentary came about is I think we thought that the, the season would, you know, might not go ahead or something would happen in the middle that, you know, would have to get called off. And I just thought there's a story there to be told and it's probably uh, an interesting one to be a part of. Now, ultimately, it, it ran off smoothly, but... You know, you saw everything that happened in the middle of it with COVID cases in Waterford and Tyrone and, and you know, all the issues with the LGFA over the last couple of weeks. Like there, there's, As every year, there's a story there to be told, but this year was probably just a little bit more mad than previous years. Yeah, because, Sean, that's the kind of unusual part. You're documenting this. Usually when someone decides to cover a story, they have a fair idea about where it's going to go. But even right yeah. into the middle of this championship, we were wondering, was it ever going to be completed? Which I'd imagine is a challenge itself when you're trying to follow along the story here. Yeah, so it, it's really it's really weird. Like, uh, Graham had the task of actually uh, editing it all and putting it together. So when we used to sit down and record with each of the players every week, I think we kind of, there was a period of time where we didn't really know where it was going because you're, you're, you're just... Like, like it is that really interesting thing like you're trying to get the the championship buzz and the the same kind of you, you want to get the championship cliches i suppose out of the players but they're just not there like you know some of the players were very vocal and honest about especially at the start that even if they were happy to play the championship they probably weren't getting the same kind of buzz that they would have. Um, I know, like, one of the participants in the documentary is Conor McDonald, and and he says, you know, their, their uh, opener against Galway in Croke Park, first round of Leinster Championship, you'd be thinking, playing Galway in Croke Park, that it would be a huge occasion. And he just said the whole occasion kind of fell flat for him. So, you know, I think that that is a story in itself, that these elite athletes were were kind of, their, their games were a bit falling at the wayside for them. Graham, can I just ask you as well on that? Um, uh, you know, this being an amateur sport, uh, but players had to adapt to, to, to everyday new things, the masks, the tests, uh, all to be expected from professional athletes, you would think. But how impressed were you by, by these athletes that you spoke to over the, the course of making the documentary, especially given the fact that they're dealing with these circumstances uh, as amateur athletes? Yeah, Shane, I think that was one of the main reasons we kind of embarked on the documentary was because these amateur athletes were given elite status. So if you were listening to, I remember when Leo Varadkar was on Matt Cooper, near the end when Level 5 was kind of muted about coming in and he was asked, will the championship go ahead in Level 5? And Leo Varadkar said no at the time because they're not like the provincial rugby teams or the Premier League where they can be tested constantly, they can live in a bubble. They have to go out back into the community. They have to live with their families. They have to go work with other people as well. They have to travel around the country when the whole place is in lockdown. So we we're extremely, extremely impressed with how they adapted to it as well. And it's interesting when you were chatting to all the different players and how all the different counties had their own little ways of doing things as well. And we had Ronan McNamee, from Tyrone on it as well and he was just discussing how difficult they found it in doing video analysis because obviously usually they would gather in a sports hall and do video analysis about the team they're about to play but then he talked about the difficulty in actually sitting down and having the host in good wi-fi 
and they tried to do it for the league game against Mayo, which was the game before the Donegal, the first round of the Ulster Championship. And they said they just had to scrap it as well. So it was very interesting just to see how all the teams had their own little ways of doing things. But really, really impressive how an amateur setup kind of adapted into such an elite mentality. And Graham, were you, were you aware or did you feel the, the almost the weight of history on your shoulders making this in that it's such a unique and iconic year uh, for all the wrong reasons? But the fact is we will look back on this GA championship season as one of the most extraordinary in our, in our history. There's a reading in the years kind of vibe off of all, all yeah. of this. So like, were you fully aware of that weight of history when you were making it? Yeah, like we, because that's what we said at the beginning. We were like, somebody has to document this. And I think it was Kieran Martin. We've got Kieran Martin, the Westmeath captain as well, when we were talking about him, uh, would he do it? And he was saying that he was actually talking to his parents as well, saying he's surprised nobody's come to him before this because it's such a momentous year. So that when we actually did approach him, he was jumping at the opportunity. So we were very, and we we're very conscious as well that these are their stories as well, because this isn't just about the football teams and the tactics and the results. This is about the people and how their lives have been shaped as well. Because some people had their own businesses. Con McDonald, as Sean mentioned, he owns his own gym in Wexford in Gorey. And he obviously struggled this year because like he, his gym was closed down for the majority of the year. So it wasn't just the weight of the story of the championship. It was their stories of 2020 as well. It was their personal life. So I think we were very conscious of that as well while doing the documentary. All right, we've got a chance to uh, hear from some of the players that the lads have been chatting to as well. Let's first of all hear from Dublin All-Ireland winner Neve Collins, who spoke about the scheduling scandal that happened just a couple of weeks ago around the LGFA and the All-Ireland semi-finals. Over the last couple of years, the leading story with women's GAA sports has, you know, sometimes been a negative headline or something that was not to do with the game that was playing. I feel like a lot of the time you know, we're focused on, you know, welfare issues rather than actually being able to talk about, you know, styles of play or matches yeah. or really exciting elements of women's sport that people haven't gotten to know about yet because they're not being covered because we're still talking about player welfare issues. So it's really frustrating and it's really disappointing. And I feel awful for Galway and for Cork because their, you know, moment on the stage has been overshadowed by what is a really, really disappointing player welfare issue. Graham, interesting, um, obviously, that you were able to bring this topic into it too. And I think there's a very fair point made by Neve there, which is that we're all guilty of it, that the story on the back of that Galway against Cork game wasn't about what happened on the field, but the discussion for the next 48 hours or so were entirely about what happened with the game being switched to Parnell Park and Crow Park. And you can really hear the frustration from Neve there, even though she wasn't directly affected by the fixture itself. Yeah, myself and Sean actually had a conversation before we chatted to Neve after that semi-final because we didn't want to make the conversation with Neve all about that game. We wanted to focus on Dublin's victory and their lead up to the final. So when we were asking her the question about it, we said, we completely understand if you don't want to answer this question, if you want to concentrate on your own team. But the way Neve reacted, we thought was fantastic. She said, no, this actually didn't just affect Cork and Galway. This affected the LGFA as a whole. And I think the whole kind of organization really came together in how they were treated that weekend. So it wasn't just the two teams, everyone was affected. And it just was a sign of how they're all in it together. All right, we can hear about the different situation in Ulster now because Tyrone's Rona McNamee also parted the documentaries with the guys, one of the featured players. And they asked him, was it different playing football in the north of Ireland with the way that the COVID restrictions were being handled there? Not, not that I thought of it that we'd be left out of the championship. We'd burn every town in Ireland if it came to it. <laughs> Start an absolute handling because we were obviously going on Boris Johnson making decisions. Um, and he doesn't, I would imagine, he's not the biggest Gaelic fan, to be honest. I would say the same boy wouldn't have a clue if Thrones in the championship or not. We're listening to clowns across the water to an extent, and then finger pointing in Belfast. So what can you do, boys? Yeah, that was fascinating stuff there from uh, Ronan McNamee, the Throne footballer on this uh, new documentary, Split Season. Sean, can I ask you, from speaking to all of these players, was there any semblance of reluctance on players' behalf to return? I'm sure attitudes changed across the championship when 
people realize the, the merits of, of having games to look forward to, even for, for supporters. But did you kind of sense any reluctance on players' behalf to return? Yeah, um, now you'll have to listen to the documentary, Shane, to find out how they actually felt about it. But there was, it was a very split um, amongst the players. You, you'll, you'll not be surprised. Those who went far, including Niamh and Declan, who ultimately went on to win the All-Ireland, they were obviously quite happy to see it go ahead. But not without their own reservations. Like Declan Hannan tells a few really interesting stories um, about, you know, because we did try to get their retrospective experience on lockdown and their club championship experience. And Declan Hannan actually had a very harrowing experience where a neighbour of his was in ICU for 60 days with the virus and sadly passed away and they couldn't go to the future funeral um so and then Connor McDonald who Graham mentioned had a local business and he was kind of and he lives with his parents and he was saying well if it ultimately comes down to working and looking after my parents versus playing this you know I I really have to sit down and have a serious conversation I, I think like at the start all of them were probably a little bit hesitant I think all of them wanted to play for their love of hurling, and love of football or just you know you know, wanted to get out there and not be stuck at home and not do a repeat of the first lockdown and watching reruns of old games. But, you know, there, there was a lot of hesitancy. And actually, originally, we had a different, we had a few extras in the lineup to this, but, you know, just for various reasons, some couldn't um, commit to doing it. And some of them were really opposed to it. And uh, it, it was just something that I found kind of a bit, I don't want to say they were forced to do it, but some of them were left in the situation where they really wanted to play this game, but they had such other you know, stuff to think about in a wider society, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, Sean mentioned uh, Declan Hannan, the Limerick hurling captain, who lifted the Lee McCarthy just a few weeks ago. This is what Declan had to say. Oh, I think it does. Yeah, I think it does. We were training last night, and there was a great buzz around the place. It's, you know, seven, seven, eight days out from an All-Ireland final, which is fantastic. I suppose the only difference, obviously, is, you know, around Limerick City there, there's just all the Christmas lights are up, and a couple of Limerick flags around the place as well. So, in that sense, it's totally different, and, you know, you're not going to meet anyone, so the, the hype and everything like that will be different to 2018, but Jesus, uh, we, as players anyway, we can't wait for it. It's, it's an all the final. This is what you want, this is the, day, the days you want to be playing, so like we're going to go hell for a letter for it. There you go, Declan Hannan. I'll tell you what, Graham, that's great access to get to get an All-Ireland captain seven days out from a final speaking to you. Yeah, we were, we were actually so lucky when when we think about it, we were just talking about myself and Sean as we were finishing it and how lucky we were because as Sean said, we did have a few other players that had agreed to it and we had more in the bank, but due to some reasons, they had to pull out. But when we had five players and two of them ended up actually winning the championship in such a historic year, it was it was brilliant. And especially with that Limerick team, it looked like they're really going to push on as well. So to have Declan as part of this documentary, we're really, really proud. It makes us look like, you know, we tactically picked two <laughs> players that we knew were going to win. I'm not a betting man, Will, but... <laughs> you hedge your bets nicely, lads. The four episodes uh, of the split season will air on Off the Ball over Christmas on News Talk. Tune in to OTB Sports Radio at 2 o'clock this afternoon uh, to get a bit of a feel of what's coming up with the lads over the next while. Graham and Sean, thanks a million for joining us on the show this morning. Thanks, Will. Thank thanks, you, Shane. Will. Thanks, Shane.